All right, we're kicking off Circle Geometry. It's recording sound from everywhere, so if you speak, it will be picked up and it'll make your video less useful. So we'll need to be a little bit quiet while we're going through these, but it won't be too bad. Parts of a circle. Segments versus sectors. Segments are where you just take your knife and you cut your cake across without worrying about making nice little sector-shaped pieces. You can see there, a chord divides a circle into segments. We've got a minor segment, the small side, major segment, the large side of the blue chord there. A chord, of course, is a line between two points on the circumference. This is all revision, we know this. Sectors, we have a minor sector. You can see the little bit labelled sector there. When you're playing Trivial Pursuit, which is a game none of you are old enough to have played anymore, you get little pieces shaped like that. That's a wedge-shaped piece with a curve. You're old enough to have played it? Good man. I'll give you a game later. Major sector is the bit left over. We'll play for your lunch. That seems fair. Um, we know those things. All right, there are a few different rules. You've probably done some of these before. Some of them you may not have done. We're going to go through them anyway. An arc length. So an arc is part of the circumference of a circle. Given that it's part of the circumference, I imagine that we would calculate the length of the arc by using a fraction of the circumference of a circle. What's our rule for the circumference of a circle? 2 pi r. Listen to that. It's almost like you guys have done this before. So if I'm going to call that arc length L, often used for arc length, the arc length L is going to be a fraction of the circle. What fraction do I have? I've got theta out of 360 degrees. Yep. Multiplied by 2 pi r. In radians, it's going to work out even nicer. How many radians in a full circle? Theta R is the arc length in radians. That's why when we're saying arc sine, arc cos, arc tan, that comes from using radians. The circumference, the length of that arc, is equal to the size of the angle in radians. It's really handy. So you've got it there in degrees. I'll indicate that with a little degrees. Got it there in radians. Radians, a little c, which I think gets confusing with the little degrees, but you get the idea. Often we don't bother writing it to radians. That's okay. Is that all right? We're all happy with that one, right? Very good. Chord length, the length of a chord. Well, it's not really anything special. What rule would I use to find the length of a chord here? I've got two sides and the angle in between. Did someone say it? Cosine rule? Yeah, cosine rule. Could we go ahead and write the length of the chord AB? Um, I'm just going to label it very creatively. X. What's my cosine rule going to say? It's going to say that side squared is going to equal some of the squares on the other two sides. It starts off as Pythagoras' theorem, doesn't it? But then we have to adjust it for the fact that it's not a right angle triangle. So it's minus 2, and it's usually BC, but they're both R, so 2 double R, cosine theta. It is AB, but in this case, A and B are both R, so that's why it just looks the same. Yeah. Or it could be 2 BC if you're using A squared. So. Well, I use a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. Because when I do Pythagoras' theorem, I don't learn that c is the hypotenuse because people mess it up. So I just take. But everyone else, if you use c squared, then that's fine. Yeah, works the same way. We're going to simplify this a little bit. Would I bother simplifying it and memorizing this rule? Maybe, maybe not. There's going to be a rule here. I would probably never memorize it. I just remember my cosine rule makes my life easier. But... You can do it whichever way you want. If you wanted to, you could even factorise that. Take out the 2R squared, 1 minus cosine theta. Of course, that's telling me X squared. X would need to be the positive square root of that. I don't need to write plus or minus square root. Why do I not need to write plus or minus square root? Can't have a negative length. Yeah. 
when they ask about the reasonableness of solutions in your exams, you want to just be thinking about those sorts of things. You can leave it like that. You could leave it as the square root of that 2r squared minus 2r squared cos theta. That would be fine as well. Probably I'm not memorizing that because there's not an obvious way to memorize it. You can make up a way if you wanted to. I'm just thinking, oh, I know my cosine rule. I can come up with that answer. Area of a sector. This is going to use the same idea as the area as the arc length, isn't it? It's a fraction of the area. So your area pi r squared usually. So we want the area of a sector. It's a fraction of pi r squared. And if we do it in radians. Theta r squared over 2. I think we first learned that in about grade 9, so we're pretty good with that one, right? Happy enough? Just a refresher on some of these rules. I can see Ken's writing, so I'll just wait a few more seconds before I keep going. Sometimes I get carried away. So what are they asking us? Oh yeah, finding it another way? Yeah. Sure. Two R sine theta over two. Yeah. Why would they need to do it another? Ah, oh, we can do it anyway. I don't know. I think they can eat if they want to learn a certain number. Ah, okay. Yes. So I think that one's easier to do just from scratch. All right. Miss Kinnear's got a challenge in here for you guys. Whoa, that's a little bit too large. Let's see if I can. Can you find another expression, another way of calculating the chord length? So we found the chord length using the cosine rule. Can you find the chord length using uh, just trigonometry? I'll give them a little bit. Just bring it down the middle there. Can we find the length that, well, that doesn't look like it's in the middle, does it? Let's see if I can get a horizontal line happening. Could be better, but that's that's good enough because now I've labelled it at a right angle. I know that it's perfect. It's just your eyes that are deceiving you now. <laughs> All right. Use that information. Find another expression for the length of the chord AB. Of course, the other way I could write it rather than giving it a letter is just write length AB. Have a go at that one now, and then I'll check back with you in a minute. All right. We've made a bit of a start there. I'll just see if I can catch this up as well. So if we bisect the chord... We know that that's going to go through, that's going to be a perpendicular bisector of the chord if it goes through the center of a circle. So the angle is going to be split in two as well. So this angle at the top here, theta over two, this opposite side, I've got x over two because I'd already labeled it x before. So using a little bit of trigonometry, Sokotoa, the sine of angle theta over two is going to be the opposite side, x over two divided by the hypotenuse, which is R. I can now multiply by R, R sine theta over two is going to equal X over two. And so to get the chord length, I could just multiply by that. So it's two R sine theta over two equals X. There may be an easier formula if you'd like to just remember formulas. A little bit easier than the, than the square root of 2r squared bracket 1 minus cosine theta. This one's a little bit easier. 2r sine theta over 2. And I'm not even sure that may pop up in a formula sheet somewhere. Not now one. I've seen it on one somewhere. 
Okay, now you don't get any of these formulas in your exam, so you either need to be able to prove them from scratch and just use them, or you have to just learn them. They are not on the formula sheet. You have pretty much everything else there, so it's only a tiny, tiny little bit. But you do need to learn them. What the heck? Area of a segment. I reckon we're all over this. Do you need me to go through it, or do you reckon you guys can just come up with the rule yourselves? Do it. I think you can do it. I will give you four minutes. All right, so we've got... To remember, degrees we can work in theta over 360, radians, theta r squared over 2. We established that earlier. Area of a triangle, half a b sine c, so that works out to a half r squared sine theta. It's just the difference between the area of your sector and the area of the triangle. So you do the area of the sector minus the area of the triangle. If we're working in radians down here, R squared over 2, theta minus sine theta is a nice, neat little rule that you could use every time if you were doing this a lot. I'm not sure why you'd be doing it a lot, but you could be doing it. Um, otherwise, you just come up with it, figure it out as you're going along. Nothing too difficult. It's not wanting to scroll any further. Give it a second to think. Sometimes I have to just coerce it a little. There we go. All right, some work for you to do. A circle with a centre O, radius length 20, has a chord AB that is 10 centimetres from the centre of the circle. Calculate the area of the minor segment formed by this chord. So go, go, go. You can definitely do this. It's really just a challenge. Can I interpret the words and make sure I do it correctly? The answer is yes, you can. Give you a few seconds to have a go. Okay, so area of a segment formula, you can remember it or use it. There's a number of different ways you can go about this. If I'm going to use that area of a segment formula, I need to find r and theta in terms of radians. So that's the two variables in that formula. If you learn it, I need to know what r is and the theta. So r is already given to you in the question. It was 20. We can then find theta by using just right angle trig. That's one way you could have done this by finding the areas and doing a few different things. Um, this, in order to solve this, this side here is my hypotenuse, this side here is my adjacent, is it not? So I can say, well, cos of theta on 2 is equal to adjacent 10 on 20. Well, that is can be simplified down to the little c symbol just means radians, by the way. That's all that means. It means I'm working in radians. So this is equal to a half. We should recognize that when you have cos of an angle equaling a half, we should be using our best friend's little buddies, you know, those triangles. So this is my... Oh, you happen to be on this one now. Oh, my God. I'm just like, this is just me now. So if we have our angle down here... Let's just write that. We've got to, oh, my word. 30. Oh, I don't want to do 30. I want to do radians, don't I? Do, oh, my God. What do, like, what do I do? Well, I'm not even touching it. It's, I'm not even touching it. Wait, what is wrong with my hand? Let's see if it'll happen when I do it. So, we're going for... Which one are we going for? Uh, the... Oh, look now. It's just... Oh, hang on. I'll put this back up. I can't write in it that way around there. Yeah, I, I don't know why I can. I think it's just the size of my hands. It means I can rest my wrist and still write on the yeah. thing. So we're going for our best friend's little buddies. We all remember those. In radians, of course. Oh, except I'm writing theta instead of pi. Pi over 3. Pi over 6. One third is bigger than 1 6, so you know which one they go opposite. Shorter side is 1. That makes that side 2. This side becomes root 3. So what angle would theta over 2 be equal to? Don't all knock me over at once with our angle of theta over 2. What, what would angle theta over 2 be? If cosine equals a half? Yeah, pi on 3. This would make the 1 the adjacent side, which is all we're trying to do, isn't it? Theta on 2 is pi over 3. So what is theta then? 
I, I, I think I heard two times pi over three, didn't I? Was that, was that what I heard? Two pi on three? Yeah, two thirds of pi. Two pi on three. That's what we're going to have. If we now know the angle theta, what's the area of the triangle? Oh, yeah, they can use the formula. We know the rule for the area of a triangle, though, don't we? What's the area of a triangle? Well, you want to just do the area of the... Oh, I see. You've got the second rule up here. I was farewelling the cross-country boys. So you can just sum in the rule. We've got the rule up there. You can now substitute in 2.3 and get your answer. Radius squared divided by 2. My radius is 20. Twenty squared, four hundred divided by two, two hundred, two pi on three, minus sine of two pi on three. What quadrant am I in? Second quadrant. In the second quadrant, sine is positive or negative? Positive. I heard everyone call out. That's it. Positive. So it's really just the same as sine of pi over 3. We can go back to our triangle. What was the sine of pi over 3? Root 3 on 2, I hear, muttered in the distance somewhere. That's your exact area. We could write it all as a single fraction if we wanted to. That might be nice. Factorised form, it's okay. I'm not sure that it's any easier to write it as a single fraction, but you could if you wanted to. Did anyone go ahead and write that area as a single fraction? Well, if you went to the trouble of doing it, I should do the same. So, common denominator there is a 6. So, this one needs to be multiplied by 2 over 2. I get 4 pi. Root 3 on 2 needs to be multiplied by 3 on 3. So, I get 3 root 3. So, 4 pi minus 3 root 3, all divided by 6. Oh, well, now we can... Divide and simplify those fractions, can't we? So we're going to have 100. 4 pi take 3 root 3. All divided by 3. Dividing the top and bottom by 2. And that looks lovely. Were we given units? Yes, we were. So we're going to write. What did I find? An area? Square centimetres. Don't forget the units. Beautiful exact area question. Not too bad. I believe we have one more question there for you to do. Calculate the shaded area of that. This was off a grade 10 exam. I'm not sure. Was it off your grade 10 exam? Or was it off a grade 10 exam the year before? No, it was before. The thing was yours? Yeah. Oh, well, let's make sure we can get it then. Go again, guys. You wouldn't want to forget it. You got this. Find the area 